All right, I've got something to show you. It may look a little painful, and I apologize, but I honestly think it's gonna help. What's up, tubulars? Welcome back, you beautiful people. I've missed you. And you are, you're gorgeous. And I appreciate all of you out there. Thanks for coming back. And if you're new here, I mean, I'm going to be talking about channel trailers. You could check mine out, but you should just subscribe. This is, it's, it's just the place to be. Now, if you're, if you're a regular, then um, things are a little bit different here in my studio. I'm at my standing desk set up because I, we need to get behind the scenes. So I'm going to be talking about channel trailers, but I'm also going to bring you behind my channel trailer to give you some context and kind of a layout, kind of a workflow that you don't have to do it exactly like this, but it may provide you with some foundation, kind of a base to work from, something to build on. So like, that's why the standing set up. And really, I just, I feel loose. Like I feel ready to rock some faces for you. I'm gonna feel that later. So the channel trailer is, I think, of the utmost importance for your channel. And let me, I'm gonna do like, let me preface a couple of things. I don't want you to freak out here because I don't want people thinking like, oh wait, I, I just started YouTube and I've put some content up there. I need to stop what I'm doing and I need to do the channel trailer like right now. Not necessarily. Now, some people might say like, yes, get your channel trailer going. Like what's the channel about? Because it'll give you a path. It'll give you something to work from. But I feel like as a creative, as someone who's using this platform for the various reasons that you may be using this platform for, I, I don't want you to get stuck. I don't want you to feel like I have to stop everything that I'm doing because I've got to get this channel trailer done. Now, most of you, I'm sure, ended up on this video, especially if you're not a subscriber, in that you searched for channel trailers, how to, why, or something to do, and YouTube served you this. And so YouTube being a search engine, it's like you didn't end up on my homepage where my channel trailer is. And so this whole context of a channel trailer, like why? Like why is it really that important? Let me tell you folks, I know that time is currency. I know that time is precious, and I know time is just, it's limited. And I appreciate you being here. And so the channel trailer, like if you ended up on this video and you watched it and you got something helpful out of it, well, if you wanted to find out more about me and like what's going on over here, if I didn't have a channel trailer, you'd probably have to scroll through like several videos to like, who is like, do I even, heck no, I don't want to even bother. But if you went over to the homepage of my YouTube channel, you could find the channel trailer and it's much shorter over there because the channel trailer is what we refer to as an elevator pitch. Now, I recommend like on the low end of a channel trailer, like 30 seconds at a minute, like just like I wouldn't go any less than that, um, but no more than around two minutes. Because again, time is currency and I do folks, I appreciate it. It's a gift that you're here and I value that. And it's the same thing on your platforms too. It's you're giving some kind of entertainment, content, something helpful, something actionable, or something that's inspirational. The things that I try to do here, and so I value people's time. And like I said, I know in plenty of videos, like I can kind of run off like I'm kind of doing right now, but I'm gonna bring you behind the scenes. I just wanna give you some high level context here that is gonna help you kind of with your narrative and building out your channel trailer. There's also going to be a little bit of like do as I say, not as I do, because as an entrepreneur who's very seasoned, like there's advice that I give that I may not necessarily follow myself. You can certainly follow that kind of against the grain, blazing like a, cra like a crazy trail on your own. I do a lot of that, but there's also advice that I need to give people, especially those that are just starting out, that I think is going to be more helpful to gain the attention that they're trying to, to gain or to get to wherever it is that they need to go, like based on their goals. So, and the biggest piece is when you're thinking about your channel trailer, what we're thinking about is the who. Who are you? And so the part of the who is like the what, right? The what about your channel. So you've got the who, that's me, Kevin Ross, and then the what, like what's going on here? Now the piece of advice that I'm giving you is to think about your niche. And so like your niche or your niche, and being in a lane that's fairly narrow, but you're going actually kind of deep. You can kind of go far with. Uh, in that direction and to provide some kind of context, some sort of value, something that people can do something with. For me, however, this channel, 
um, is, is really about my creative entrepreneurial landscape, my creative entrepreneurial endeavors. I am a serial entrepreneur, as I say in my channel trailer. Actually, that's linked below if you need to check it out at any time. But what it does is it provides context of like all of the things that are kind of creative and also my personal life as well. So I definitely have gone deep in some areas like with filmmaking, photography, and podcasting and a few other business endeavors. But then, you know, there's also some sprinkle of like lifestyle stuff, family stuff, and things like that. But I do recommend advice to you, go deep in your niche and then start to kind of like widen out a little bit. As you're providing more value, people will connect with you on a much deeper level. And that's ultimately what I've pivoted over to is doing more of this kind of content and less vlogging for right now. So like that's kind of a decision that I made and I think it's it's more helpful to you. And as we kind of build this community together, then we'll connect a little bit deeper and then some of that wider aspect uh, won't be as problematic. But there's probably plenty of channels that you subscribe to that you don't watch every video um, or it might be aligned with every video. But generally speaking, like, I do consider everybody like a community member here. So the who, the what, where you are could be interesting, thinking about that. And so like I'm in Colorado and people might find that interesting. And of course the why, why you're doing YouTube, like why you're here, like what what's going on, like why you are providing this content. And I talk about that in my channel trailer as well. And then really like how, like how is that delivered? So it, again, is it a vlog or is it just like in a studio providing tutorials or like what what's kind of the behind the, the, the how and like how you're delivering that in this video or this kind of content. But these are the things that you can answer in your channel trailer. So many of you might be saying like, well, yeah, I could do a channel trailer. Like I'm really comfortable talking to the camera. I can do some talking head stuff and have this thing done in like 20, 30 minutes. Well, that's that's okay. But this is the power of video, right? Like this is the power of visual media, visual storytelling. And so like I'm comfortable in front of the camera too. Like I can talk, like I talk to the camera as if I'm talking to a person. I, I've done that for a long time. And so like, oh wait, you just had a little something on your ND filter, on the lip of your ND filter. If we actually meet in real life, I will not put my finger in your face. But I do think going above and beyond of just that talking headpiece, I think it, it, it's really important. Uh, to offer some B-roll, so, so some visuals. It could be photos, it could be video, but something that you can animate for that potential community member or somebody who just could be interested in checking out your channel. So think about those things, and especially if you're just starting out, don't get so caught up in the whole, but I don't have a lot of photos, I don't have a lot of video, I'm just starting out. I'm gonna get to that, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit uh, of that visual narrative of like giving some value because that visual storytelling piece is just huge. So whether you're doing the talking head thing or whether you're doing something like where I did, I did a voiceover. So I actually recorded the narrative piece and then the music and then I picked out all the clips. Being more of a creative entrepreneur and like doing video for like a long time, like in my channel trailer, I have like clips in there that are from like a long time ago, like many years ago. However, don't get so caught up into that because we're thinking about this as a project in bite-sized pieces. I don't want you to stop creating just to get your channel trailer. I want you to keep doing what you're doing because the more you create, the more B-roll and the more context you can provide in that visual storytelling. So your script. This is something like where you can kind of think about the narrative that you want to discuss. And again, whether you're talking in front of the camera like this the whole time, or whether you're kind of cutting to some B-roll most of it, uh, kind of like I did. So getting an outline of what you want to say within that 30 seconds to as much as two minutes, and kind of outlining like all of those things that I addressed earlier. And you know, once you have your script, here's the thing, like the script shouldn't be something that you literally like just sit there and like read and not read very well and have good inflection in your voice like it should be a conversation that you have so if you have to like record it several times just to kind of have a better flow and that's what i'm going to show you in my workflow of how i did it but just think of the script as just a base to start from to kind of have that conversation now one of the things that is also like really important in the way that i did it was having a music track underneath now pick something that speaks to you, that is like who you are, because again, your narrative should be like authentic, like who you are, like how, like why people should connect with you, but also that music to kind of hit on like, that's a piece of who you are. But the music also is something that you can edit to very easily. And so like I picked a track that spoke to me, that felt like really good and something I could kind of edit to. So 
script, music, and then again, for me, it was then going in and finding the clips. And again, if you've created this narrative and you don't have a lot of visual content, then like go out and film it, go shoot it. But that's why this is a project that you, you can kind of work on and chip away at slowly, um, not too slow, but just so that if you have like something where you're like, oh, I could put this clip in here where I said this, go out and film it, you know, go be creative. Don't like, well, I, I'm just gonna take that out and I don't have a clip for that. Like go do it, take action. So speaking of action, let's get into the behind the scenes and I will show you my workflow and kind of the reasoning behind stuff. And again, just a foundation to build from. Okay, so we are here behind the scenes and uh, like I said, I know there's a lot here, but I hope it's helpful. And so what we're gonna do is this is my Google Doc. This is the narrative that I put together and I've been blogging and creating content for a long time. So it was really easy for me to kind of give some context about who I am, what I'm doing, why people should be connected or, or whatever. So I, this was, I sat down and I just kind of typed this out and just sort of riffed and I, this is what I came up with. And there were some notes that I put in here, like I just highlighted like, okay, I, this would be great. Like when I said this, like to bring that, that clip in of Flynn and Declan from like many years ago. So I put some notes in the margin, although I probably could have put more notes in the margin, but once I got going, like I just, I went crazy like with the clips and stuff. So just give yourself like an outline, some kind of context to have a conversation. So let's not get too overwhelmed by what you're seeing here, but this is the audio layout that I did. And so I use Logic and you know, just because I'm on a Mac, I can link some stuff up below if you need something like this, but this allowed me a work environment, like a flow so that I could actually do this multiple times. And I recommend actually taking the opportunity to record over and over again, like several takes of your narrative. And what I mean is just kind of read through it. If you're doing a voiceover, even if you're doing talking head, just kind of read through it and allow yourself to kind of have that conversation. And I ad libbed a little bit, and this is why I have a master track. And this is why I have multiple takes. So again, the multiple take, like that first take might be like, oh, wow, that sounds like so lame or just so flat. But like by the time you did it, take four, take five or six, you're like, boy, I was just, I was humming along. So looking here at the master track in Logic, and I have this kind of highlighted because it's unmuted. Let's actually unmute the mute or let's mute the music. So as you'll see, I have multiple takes here. And what it came down to is I needed a master uh, file or a master track where I'm like, okay, I liked what I sounded like in the first part of this. So like wherever I pulled that from, I put it into the master section. So, you know, like there, there's a section here where I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I really like what I said there or how I said it. So like I pulled that from another section and then removed what was in here and then put it up here. And I kind of built out my master track based on, like I said, the inflection, laughs, or just kind of ad libbing a little bit. And I created the master track that I was going to export. Now, what I did do is I picked my music. So I, you know, and I think music is important and I listened to it with my, my voice just to see, is that going to fit? Is that kind of going with the flow of things? But here's what I recommend. So I wanted to edit in, in my video editor separately, my audio track, like my vocal track and the music track. So what I did was, is I just, I kind of laid this out and looked at it and looked at the waveforms and I was like, okay, so there's a section here, like there's a build. So right here, it's kind of low, but then the waveform, you see how that kind of goes up. I'm like, all right, I know that I'm going to have to do something different with this visually with the video and then also with the audio. So when I exported this in logic, I just went ahead and I, I just exported, I highlighted this and I just exported the audio, like my vocal track. That's it separately. Because then as we go into, and I use Final Cut Pro, what I did was, is I have my, my vocal track here and then my audio music here. And I created this kind of secondary timeline or just, you know, this gray area here. And if, if you don't use Final Cut or you don't use something like this, I just, I wanted to use something to where I literally could like move things around and do things with, and it wouldn't like move my audio anywhere. I want to control full control of my video clips and my audio clips separately. And then this, this area here allows me to move stuff around as I need to. So what I did was 
let's ignore all of the the visuals for a second. I laid the music track in first. That was the first thing that I did. And I just wanted to listen to it. And then I marked some sections that I wanted to kind of play around with like later in my post-production. So like, as you'll see, I have these marks here that I created because these were gonna be like certain cuts in the video that I wanted to make as I, I went in. But I recommend just kind of laying your tracks out first or your visuals first and then going in and color correcting and doing speed ramping and things like that. But it just kind of gave me some sort of context. Now the music track, and like I said, why I keep it separately separate is you'll see as I'm scrolling, it's all, it's not cut up. It's just, there's the music track and it's all kind of together in one. Now you can cut it up if you need to for certain sections, but what I wanted more control of is the vocal track. So as you'll see here, I didn't start my vocal right away, but I have the music and the video. I have that starting before I have a little bit of video and I have a little bit of audio starting before my vocal. So then I have my vocal and then there was a section here where I felt like after I'd said that, I wanted to have more of a pause. So I dropped off in the audio here and then I, what I wanted to do is cut and have a bit more of a pause. So again, you'll see like that's why I wanted control of that. So then I could kind of move that section over here I a into the next section. So then as we go along, you'll see I continue to add, add clips and I'm listening to what I'm saying. And I, I pulled in over, I pulled in 65 clips for this trailer. I didn't use all 65 clips, but these were just things that I found. And hopefully you label your, your content or your uh, visuals because it's a nightmare if you don't. Um, but I, I went in and I was like, oh yeah, that, like what I said there, like that's a clip I want to pull in, but this is what I kind of pulled into my library. So like a lot of clips, but I didn't use everything, um, in this channel trailer, but this was, I used kind of a lot of it, most of it. So as, like I said, as we go along, there were things that I said and I'm like, oh yeah, like that time, like where I'm talking more about business and that hustle. And here I am talking to someone about business, doing an interview and then going in and here's a podcast, again, building, creating uh, a podcast. And then I even did something kind of creative where I talked about building something from the ground up and I found a clip of coffee. So like, I thought that that was kind of like relative. And then um, the ground up here, sort of following in my kids, we were at uh, Dead Horse Point uh, on a road trip and it was this cut that I pulled away and there's the ground and I'm kind of pulling up. Again, I just kind of got creative with it. So I don't want to get into too much detail about this, but what I want to do is just kind of, you know, allow yourself a little bit of creativity here, have some fun, have that connection, build that authenticity. Um, and again, there were sections where I put in like, this is part of like the vlog that I have. And so like we built a, a backyard snowboard and ski jump, you know? So like that's, those are just clips from there. And then just clips of my kids and then clips of me, filming and then the technology that I have on this channel. So like these are just things that that are relevant to you know the narrative and the visual pieces kind of help tell that story. And like I said, as you'll see, like I, I can cut these audio tracks and move them as I need to. So my channel trailer is something that I worked on for a while, but I try not to get frustrated. I just try to be patient with myself and the the work itself. And again, here's another section where I wanted to kind of speed ramp something. So it was kind of the water fountain and it was just kind of where the music kind of hit and the fountain kind of went like over to the right uh, visually. And so, you know, play around with it. But like, this is, this was my workflow. Like as you'll, I'm just kind of scrolling through and just kind of for the sake of time. Oh, and speaking of a photo, here's something that you can animate a photo. So like, this is a photo and this was a thumbnail that I did. And so like, I literally took that rocker of faces and it just sort of animates and kind of comes into uh, focus there or into frame rather. It wasn't out of focus, but it just comes into frame. So play around with it and, you know, just kind of, allow yourself to be creative. I had this really clear call to action, subscribe. So I put this kind of banner and text across here and this is what I did. And you know, that was all keyframed uh, together. It was something that I used as a clear call to action to subscribe to the channel. So that's kind of how it was for me. And that's kind of how I did my workflow. 
All right, folks, so hopefully you found that helpful, not too overwhelming. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. This is a community. We, I want to help you out. I want to know how things are going. And as always, go out there and do things that matter. Keep rocking faces. Be sure to like and subscribe because you know what? We need a clear call to action, right? Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one. Ready to rock faces.